Uh, in the audience today, we have a lot of uh, the decision makers of, of uh, Danish cultural life. Who are the ones that should act and could act on this matter right now? Well, everybody should be acting on it, but it seems to me that artists themselves have an absolutely crucial role in terms of leading the way. That actually, no matter how, whatever, whatever government may do in terms of providing funds and so on, uh, unless artists actually embrace some of this, interculturalism is actually coming up from underneath. It's actually coming from the demands of minority artists saying, actually, my voice must be heard. So actually, we need that, you know, act, and that needs responding to. Uh, in order to create intercultural dimensions, or intercultural dialogue, I assume you have to uh, poke or shake up what is considered normal and classical art and culture. How do you do that? We have to make some mind shifts, and actually we have to recognize that potentially everybody is an artist. Now that challenges major notions of the conservatoire tradition, the 19th century tradi traditions that artists are somehow blessed by God, um, it's laid on their heads and somehow talent emerges from nowhere, um, some kind of Greek notion, or a Mandarin version of the arts where an elite decide what is important art. And actually we have to challenge some of those notions and say, well, if everybody is an artist, we need to, sh it's one of the things I was trying to say, we do need to shift pedagogy, you know, that actually, um, you know, in dance, Western tradition talks about how things look. Actually, what about how things feel? And I think we need, we need to play around with who can be an artist, who gets access to it, who has a voice, how is that voice given, given, given room to grow and develop and speak out. And I think we need to think of other, uh, you know, that we've, we've developed a, an, an elite that here are some artists, actors, dancers, musicians, painters, who are somehow cut off from society. And I would like them to recognize that they are citizens, neighbors, mothers, fathers, brothers, daughters, sons, and have all the other human attributes that the rest of us have um, and should be relating to us in their full humanity, not as this kind of to the side. And it's about re-engaging art inside society uh, rather than keeping it at a distance and somewhere separate in these separate institutions. So the large cultural institutions in Denmark, they should actually um, uh, open up for the, the uh, underprivileged uh, artists, if you may. Um, I think there are real examples, I mean, of orchestras who've absolutely changed their, the canon of their work to include a much more diverse range of music. In my own city of Birmingham, uh, the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, after years of the music world saying, our audience is dying, it's all old people, young people aren't there, uh, it doesn't represent the diversity of society. Actually, if you go to a performance of the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, it has loads of young people there. It also has loads of diverse people because it does a diverse program. So there are ways in which the cultural institutions are engaging differently re-engaging with the communities that they are paid to serve. They are not paid to serve an elite upper and middle class audience. They are paid by the state to serve the whole of the population. So part of the strategy could be that the, the large cultural institutions should uh, actually set aside space, time and place and uh, money uh, and to program. provide for, 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 for the intercultural dialogue. Well, actually, actually recognize who's in the community actually kind of look around and go, what is this city composed of? I mean, there must be parts of, um, where are we, Copenhagen? Yes. <laughs> that are not entirely white and middle class. They are part of the community that pays taxes to this community that supports the cultural institutions. Are the cultural institutions not going, hey, Who's around here? Who pays our, ba our wages and our, our subsidy? Don't we have a responsibility to them? And it's interesting that Birmingham and 
Birmingham, which is the city I live in, and Leicester, the city I, in which I'm working, are now in competition to see which of them can be the first city in Britain to have 50% of its population not indigenous white British. And, and actually, the cultural institutions are reflecting this. When I see a program for the new, brand new theater in Leicester, the program is also written in non-European non languages, as well as European languages, which is about making a statement about access and accessibility and you don't have and to. And recognizing the differences. And recognizing who, where, what the city is. Do you think these strategies that you uh, apply in the UK uh, are directly applicable to, uh, to, to Danish or even Nordic uh, uh, countries? Um, I think we have very, we have different and significant different cultural histories, cultural traditions, cultural structures, financial structures, and I think, I mean, short of saying it's up to you, it is up to you.